Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Film Studies WJEC AS level and I'm going to be doing Section B, Living with Crime. I have studied My Brother the Devil and Bullet Boy, so I hope that you guys have watched these films too and have watched these before looking at this video as I will be analysing the key scenes and micro and macro features of them. So, to access the top bands you must talk about messages and values, narrative, genre, context of the time, representation, film language when analysing key scenes and some theories if necessary. Theories do add extra marks and adding the names of the theorists would be great too. These are usually some of the things that they will ask you about. Um, they will ask you about the messages and values of the opening sequences, the way the narrative works, how suspense is used and etc. So we're going to start off with comparing so they are both social realist films. They are filmed in a real location with minimal product design as they are independent films. They try to show as much authenticity as possible. And they reinforce this through non-professional actors and also use the community as extras, such as extras from Hackney's Flats. The main actors were also from a similar background to the characters portrayed, such as Muslims, Egyptians. They are also both filmed in a cinema verite style, I think that's how you say it, but it means truthful cinema. They try to show the reality of society and want to expose the truth, unlike in Hollywood films which are filled with special effects and things that are so superficial. They show little, this is where they use little equipment and artistic techniques, and this includes a lot of improvisation. The actors express their truth as an ethnic minority and their background. So we're going to start off with My Brother the Devil, which was made in 2012 by Sally El Husseini, who is a female director. So in the opening sequence, we have a first shot of Rashid in a low angle, punching a boxing bag, which shows his performance as aggressive and puts emphasis on his masculinity. There is also a tracking shot of Mo and Rash walking and talking, as Mo tells him about how good his GCSE grades were. This shows that Mo is innocent and has good morals, as he is still a child. This shows a happy equilibrium in the film. In mise-en-scene, Mo is wearing his school uniform, which shows that he's only 16, 17, and has just passed his GCSEs. When Rash and Mo come back home with his friend Izzy, he brings him a TV as a gift. The father has a stern facial expression, showing, his, showing how sceptical he is about where he got the money to get the TV from, as he has no job. Mo's excited to be rewarded a new TV. The mother shows sympathy and hugs him for doing well in his GCSEs and is sad that he can't have the TV anymore. Their home is also tight with the wide shots that are quite claustrophobic as loads of people are in them. Some messages and values and representation. There is a lot of unemployment for EMs and the lower class as he complains about him being unemployed and he sounds like he doesn't want a job as he says, what can I do at the job centre? And he says, what do you think? Get a job. The Egyptian family are also presented as racist and hold traditional values. This is where he, the father says, a job. I'm sick of you hanging around with these black boys, as he whispers in front of Rash and his black friend. The parents still talk in their native language, which shows that they haven't completely transitioned to the British culture as well, showing that they still have the traditional values. Uh, this is also another reason why they also can't accept Rash for, for being gay, as a lot of people in the British culture accept homosexuality, but because they are traditional, they do not. When Mo collects Rash's weed, Mo meets some, some of Demon's Hood Rats, which is the rival gang of DMG. The cinematography is handheld to imitate Mo's movements, and there are close-up of the boys shouting towards the camera, which puts the audience in perspective. The shots of other members invading the shots makes it claustrophobic and makes the audience feel uncomfortable. There is also natural lighting used. The editing is also fast paced to link to the mood of the scene and to Mo's reactions of shock and his heart racing and surprise. When Mo diverts his route to escape the police, the sound of the loud market fades away, which creates suspense. And then you hear the loud, what do you want, bruv? I think that's what he says. But it's something like that. 
When Mo diverts his route to escape the police, the sound of the loud market fades away, which creates suspense and tension, and then the sudden sound of the hood rats interrogating Mo causes shock to the audience. When the hood rats chase him after Mo gets away, suspense music rises and a crescendo is played when they lose Mo in the crowd to signify relief and show that Mo is safe. The hood rats are represented as the stereotypical thug. This can link to stere um, this can link to Tessa Perkins' theory of stereotypes. There are tracksuits, dark clothing, aggressive facial expressions, body language. They are threatening with a knife. They're also ethnic minorities. They are also invading his personal space. Mo's facial expressions obviously present fear as he is shocked by this new type of environment of crime as he is a naive, innocent boy compared to Rash and DMG. One boy is shouting, this guy, who is interrogative and shows an angry glare at Mo. This also li links again to Tessa Perkins' stereotype theory, which I mentioned before, where the media represents ethnic minorities as criminals. But there's an element of truth in this, as there are a large of ethnic minorities that are targeted by the police, as there are some ethnic minorities that are criminals. When, when Mo meets Aisha and witnesses Izzy's death, there is low-key lighting, which can signify danger. There is also a long shot of DMG's gang approaching and a mid shot of Demon and Rash talking, and a close up of Rash headbutting Demon. Can you see that it started from a long shot to a close up? The shots get more claustrophobic as Rash approaches Demon, creating more tension as they get closer and closer. Then there are wide shots of everyone fighting and shouting, and there are also close ups of the dog biting the gang member. Furthermore, there are close-ups of everyone's reactions to the death of the dog as suddenly the gang member from DMG stabs the dog aggressively. Everything is silent from then. Everyone stops their fighting and just looks at the dog slowly die. When everything is quiet, we suddenly get a wide shot of Izzy getting stabbed and this, create, and this provokes the audience's reaction as they wouldn't have expected this. This is really sad as before Izzy was trying to get a job which shows that he was trying to escape from crime. There is also a low angle two shot of Izzy and, and the dog on the floor whilst everyone runs away from the police sirens showing the effect of crime. There is also fast paced editing during the scene especially during the close ups of the dog biting the member and the shots constantly go back and forth until we see a low angle of the gang member suddenly stab the dog. You can see that Mo is petrified constantly looking back at the gang while he walks away into the alleyway, watching discreetly. This, this signifies his innocence and he is becoming desensitised, as later in the film we see him constantly go to DMG's headquarters and look at all of the drugs and start dealing as well, showing that he's desensitised to crime and becoming the devil. Well, to be honest, I think he's the devil. I don't know. It's, it's, it's different interpretations. You know. So some context. Hackney is ranked fourth in highest crime rate, and that could sim and that symbolizes the truth of Hackney. After this, Rash tries to get a job. This is this shows that he was influenced by Izzy as he tries to get a job too and wants to change his ways after Izzy died. There is a wide shot of him sitting alone on one side of the corridor. There's also low key lighting with grey tones which creates a dull atmosphere that mimics Rash's facial expressions which shows depression, boredom and sadness. There's a mid shot of a white woman approaching Rash and he looks up at her from his seat. You can see the social class difference as he looks vulnerable and she stands up there confident, confidently and this shows the social division and this shows the social division. Ethnic minorities are seen as fear as inferior and the lower class. Then when the lady says you haven't filled out the reference section it could be a teacher or other profession put in a good word assuming that he's never had a job before. Then a white job applicant across the room is smirking and laughing at Rash and ridiculing him for trying to break the glass ceiling as there is lack of social mobility for ethnic minorities as they are seen as inferior whereas the white people are seen as at the top and they don't want the ethnic minorities to break this glass ceiling, which is why they're mocking him. Then, after this, there is an extreme close-up of Rash's aggression as he crumples up the job application, showing that he's still staying on the 
under the glass ceiling and, in, and is giving up. So when DMG tried to kill Rash at Saeed's house, there is a close-up of the DMG member hiding a rubber glove in his pocket. And then the shot cuts to Mo's shock of betrayal and his sceptical facial expression, which provokes suspense from the audience as he knows that DMG is lying to him. The shot tracks Mo's movement as he goes out, which is slow and steady, to link with his nervousness and panic in this situation. This shot is a red herring as the music rises, but when the door opens and it's a woman, there is a crescendo and a sign of relief. When the member tells Mo how Rash killed Demon, the shots constantly cut to see Mo's reaction, which creates suspicion. And then when he's outside and there's a red herring, there is a fast-paced editing when Mo tackles the traitor and slows down when he gets shot, which provokes shock and sadness for the audience. After this, it's slow-paced and the audience have more sympathy for Mo, as he's suffered a lot just to save his brother. Some messages and values is that Mo is not following the cycle of violence anymore, but is sticking up for his brother. He is no longer sticking up for DMG and going into this crime environment. He is trying to break his part. He's trying, he has chosen to not follow Rash's past life and break the glass ceiling with Rash. In the closing sequence, there is an over-shoulder shot that puts emphasis on how close the brothers are in the scene when they talk to each other, which shows the strength of their relationship now and creates a new equilibrium as they stick up for each other and are no longer in conflict. There's also low angle, shallow depth of field shots that focus on the two brothers and show them have it hugging and saying their goodbyes. The lens flares and the sun behind them in the back as a backlight creates a halo effect, which juxtaposes to the film title of being a devil, as it shows that Mo is innocent and it's restored him to be a good person. And the glass ceiling looks like it's broken and now they have a new equilibrium where they can start off fresh. There's also slow paced editing to link with the calm peaceful mood and the final shot is Rash being able to walk away confidently and start a new life as a new person where he feels accepted and confident with his sexuality and identity. So some themes, sexuality, when Rash and Saeed kiss, Rash approaches Saeed's apartment in, and there is a low angle shot as he keeps looking up at Saeed's window but tries to stop himself from getting closer as he keeps going back and forth. This creates this whole romantic cliche kind of scene with like Troy Bolton looking up at um, Gabriella as well as um, Romeo and Juliet. There's also a close up of Saeed and Rash's foreheads close in low key lighting showing that their sexuality is still in the closet and Rash is still uncomfortable to expose himself to the rest of the crime environment and is not confident with his sexuality. His personal identity is now changing as he has con gone back to Saeed and has basically taken back all that he has said for calling him a homo and being homophobic as he is a homosexual. Homosexuality for a person in the gang culture was not accepted and for someone of Egyptian descent it was considered immoral as homosexuality was not acceptable in, in Egyptian traditional values. This is evident when Mo says, I'd rather have a brother that's a bomber than a homo. So he'd rather have someone that's a terrorist rather than a homosexual. As he says, you make me sick, Rash. Wish you was never my brother. It's evident again uh, about his sexuality when Rash meets his parents outside the hospital in the closing sequence. And his father has a stern, disappointing look in his face. He says, come home now. Please put a stop to all of this. This could imply that his sexuality maybe. In this shot, you can also see him carrying Saeed's helmet, helmet in a feminine type of way as he shows a feminine type of body language as he holds it kind of like a purse. Rash is ashamed and hides it behind his back, showing that he's still insecure about his sexuality and scared to expose himself. Gender. Women are represented as caring, understanding and moral figures. Aisha disagrees with what Mo does and doesn't accept Mo's necklace due to how he got it. Because he know, as she says, nah Mo, I can't take it. But I got you the best one. I know how you got the dough. I'm sorry. He got it through selling drugs with DMG. The, gra the crackhead in DMG's apartment is seen as moral as she tells Saeed and Mo what DMG's plan was when Rash makes a deal to kill Demon. 
He tells them where they are and what they're doing. Women such as Rash's ex-girlfriend can be represented as a sexual object, as we see Rash have sex with her after Rash confronts Saeed for being gay. This kind of looks like a kind of makeup sex and rough sex with her as she as he takes advantage of her to reassure himself that he is straight. It is evident that she is not enjoying it due to her disgusted facial expression. Men are also represented as aggressive thugs such as DMG, is kind of portrayed as gender expectations maybe in this area and for the lower class maybe. When Mo gets mugged by Demon's boys, Rash calls him a pussy for not being tough. The seven, some context of My Brother the Devil. The 7-7 seven, seven bombings influenced Sally to start working on My Brother the Devil as many Arabs and Arab youths were stereotyped as terrorists in the media. Sally wanted to portray the truth about Arabs around her in London, as their cultural identity was different to how the media portrayed them. She wanted to emphasise the struggles of outcasts and gangs in Hackney, which isn't seen a lot in the cinema. It was filmed in Hackney, in the community in this estate, where extras were also starring in the film. The film was shot in 2011, but there were riots during the production, and they had to ban exterior scenes such as with fights, guns, knives with the youth. So they temporarily had to film in Wimbledon due to the riots and transformed it to look like Hackney. Their set looked like a quaint country village. Russia's family were also Egyptian and they held traditional values still which was evident in the opening scene. They also came across as kind of racist and homosexuality in Egypt is considered unacceptable is considered unacceptable in their views. Right, Bullet Boy. This was in 2004 and was directed by Sal Dib. This is the narrative arc. Pause here to see it if you need a recap. In the opening sequence, the film opens with a close-up of Curtis lying on the back in the boot of Wisdom's car. And after the title sequence, Bullet Boy, there is a shot of Ricky also lying on his back, which shows there is a connection between them. This suggests that Curtis is destined to follow his brother's footsteps and end up as a perpetrator of gun crime, as this is what bullet point means, a perpetrator of gun crime. Some themes in the opening sequence, cycle of violence, poverty. When Wisdom and Curtis pick up Ricky, they smoke in front of Curtis. There is a close-up of Ricky exhaling the smoke, and then the shot cuts to Curtis chewing on a piece of grass, showing that he's learning his actions from Wisdom and Curtis. There's also loyalty. Ricky tells Curtis to take his girlfriend's phone and check if she has done anything disloyal while he was in prison, but Curtis asks for money. Then he says, it's not a money ting, man. It's a family ting, standard. This scene is after the party where Wisdom and Ricky go and scare Godfrey and his dog, and this is where his dog dies. There's slow-paced ed editing to create um, suspense and dramatic irony. Wisdom and Ricky are also watching him as Wisdom doesn't know. There's also a build-up of tension when Wisdom shoots his dog and loud suspense music. There is cross-cutting which creates fast-paced editing and this builds up to create a crescendo when the dog is shot. Some messages and values. It is evident that Ricky doesn't want to get involved in Wisdom's conflict as he complains saying, I thought you were just going to scare him. And he was like, nah. This shows that he wants to help him because he is his friend. Wisdom is a bad influence that brings Ricky back into the crime environment. When Rio and Curtis play with the gun, uh, there is a close-up of Curtis carefully inspecting the gun when he first finds it, looking at every part of it and showing that he has lack of knowledge of the gun and wants to learn it very well. There is also a mid-shot of Curtis in the toilet with the gun tucked in his trouser trousers which puts emphasis on the cycle of violence, learning his behaviour from what he sees on the TV, what he learns from his brother, as previously he was just playing violent video games. There is also slow paced editing when they are in the forest. There are tracking movements and over the shoulder shots with shallow depths of field shots to focus on Curtis holding the gun and his reaction which shows he is nervous. Curtis's body language and facial expressions express curiosity and anticipation to find Rio. There is also fast-paced editing as he quickly turns when he hears rustling noises. You can see this is Rio running past and then he immediately shoots. 
There is slow paced editing when Rio falls to the floor to create tension and provoke shock with the audience as the camera dolly moves to show Rio hiding and Curtis coming closer. Um, Joseph Campbell's hero, hero theory. Curtis is the protagonist and begins the film at a point of innocence due to him being young. When Ricky returns, Curtis explores the unknown world, which is the crime environment, where he emulates Ricky and Wisdom's actions. The open green field can symbolise peace and mystery and freedom, which the brothers look at. However, because Curtis is entering the crime environment, he brings this into the green field and loses his adolescence and innocence. In the ending scene, when Curtis gets a kebab for Ricky, there is a close-up of Ricky looking at the green open field and a POV shot of him looking at the field, which implies that he wants freedom and wants to get out of the crime environment. This is where he tells Curtis to get kebab and leaves. Ricky decides to leave and goes to the train station. There is a wide shot to present him as lonely and isolated as he is by himself but you can see that other people in with hoods up are approaching him and he starts to get skeptical. The shots go from long shot, mid shot, wide shot to close up when Godfrey shoots Ricky six times. This shows the claustrophobia as they get closer and closer, showing that Ricky has nowhere to escape. The, also, the diegetic sound, there was loud horn. It, with the diegetic sound in this scene, there was a loud horn of the train coming past in the low, wide, ang low angle wide shot where we see Ricky and his gun wound. Perhaps the setting and the idea of the train coming past at the end could imply that this is Ricky's last stop and this is where he will stay. When Ricky's mum and Curtis see his dead body, we see them crying and repenting in low key lighting and are clearly upset. But Ricky was the main cause of his family being in poverty and violence. Now that, but now that he is dead, Curtis um, learns consequences of crime and throws away the gun in the river, and he has a chance to get out of the crime environment, showing that the glass ceiling has broken for him. This is evident that it was Ricky's fault for Curtis shooting Rio when the mum says, "I want to give him a chance," and tells him to leave the house. So this film kind of implies in order to be out of the crime environment, you have to lose the person causing it to break the glass ceiling. Uh, another theme, cycle of violence, poverty. When Wisdom brings Ricky and Curtis back to Hackney, he hits Godfrey's car mirror, which starts the conflict and the disequilibrium. There's fast-paced editing to create a conflict when the group quarrel, and it cross-cuts to a close-up of Curtis silently talk, taking in what's happening around him. Uh, there's some representation. Levi Strauss's binary opposites. There's a clear division between white people and black people. White people are represented as authorities, such as the probation officer, teacher and police officer, and the black people are represented as the lower class, which puts emphasis on the glass ceiling and the social racial division, which creates lack of social mobility. Black people are represented as the stereotypical aggressive thugs, tracksuits, guns, slang, swearing. We do have one man, Leon, who is a pastor that tries to persuade Ricky and Curtis into good morals. When Curtis says sorry to Rio's parents, he goes to church and the pastor preaches for him and tells him to have forgiveness. We can see that Curtis is trying to restore an equilibrium as he goes to see him and wants forgiveness. When women are represented as moral, the mum is understanding and wants Ricky to do better and throws a pile of job leaflets on the table before she leaves and argues at Ricky for not being with his family or being disrespectful. Shay, Ricky's girlfriend, argues with Ricky for getting involved with crime. For example, in the media middle sequence, so what, you have to get involved as well, let him sort it out. But he won't stop because of the theme of loyalty. He saved my life, man. Now you're telling me to let go. When Ricky comes to her house and says what happened at Godfrey's yard, Shay knocks some sense into his mind by slapping him and calling him stupid. Eventually, in the, in, near to the closing sequence, Shay gives up her, on Ricky and, as he doesn't listen to her and Ricky says, open the door. Why? So you can tell me more lies? Location. In the opening sequence, when Wisdom drives Ricky home, he looks out into the green open field, which can symbolise freedom, peace, and also creates short respite. 
as after this, the shots get closer to Hackney as the frame gets more claustrophobic with buildings and high-rise flats creating a walled city. Ricky is re-entering the crime environment, which suggests that crime is inescapable and there is a glass ceiling for ethnic minorities. Ricky's body language and facial expressions look agitated and uncomfortable in the car. The mid shots of him in the car captures his entrapment and, the, and we know that the location will influence his behaviour due to the high rate of crime in Hackney. Um, loyalty. If Ricky doesn't do a favour for Wisdom, he will lose their friendship and Wisdom influences him back to the crime atmosphere. So basically, if Wisdom didn't pick up Ricky in the first place, most of the narrative relating to the crime environment wouldn't have happened and Wisdom controls Ricky's fate. In context of Bullet Boy, in 2004, there was an increase in knife crime and a decrease in gun crime. The cinema verite style, it was shot on cheap 16mm film to create a cinematic look on a limited budget as it's an independent film. The London homicide was the highest from 2000 and had the highest rate in 2004. Hackney was ranked fourth in the highest rate of crime. The director wanted to raise awareness specifically towards knife crime in London. North East London had a negative reputation as they were nicknamed Murder Mile as this shows that they had a high rate of incidents of fatal attacks with guns. There were also high statistics of female lone parent families and lack of male role models which leads to being nurtured inadequately. This can explain Ricky and Curtis's behaviour. Opinion leaders Crime rappers that talk about gang culture in the media will influence lower class and ethnic minorities such as Stormzy, I don't know at, at the time of 2004, maybe like Skepta, Jay-Z. Um, this will follow, they, the ethnic minorities will follow these morals and follow the gang culture. I hope that was useful and hopefully most of that got in there. If you struggle with terminology, film language, please check out my Memorize quiz where you can test yourself. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please check out section A and section C too. Bye!